Hi everyone, it's James from Junior Developer Central here and in this video I wanted to talk through four different ways that you can run JavaScript locally on your computer. So you might have come from a tutorial site such as Code Academy where you have your own little editor in the browser that you type your JavaScript into, click a button, it runs it and checks whether or not you've completed the task for that particular exercise. Um, but if you want to start writing your own programs or putting interactive JavaScript elements on your own pages, then you need to kind of come away from that tutorial sort of site and actually run JavaScript locally on your computer. So we'll talk through four different ways of doing this in this video. And there's no right or wrong way of doing it to when you're practicing. So I'll talk through the pros and cons of each approach as we go through them. Okay, so the, the first approach that you can take is to just literally open up the developer tools in your browser. So uh, I'm using Chrome here, but it's the same for pretty much any modern browser. Um, if you just right click and click inspect, uh, it may say different things depending on your browser. Um, and I'm literally just on the, the Google uh, homepage here at the moment. And if we go to inspect, what that will do is open up uh, the developer tools uh, for Chrome. So if you've never used developer tools before, um, there's a lot to learn, but uh, it, in essence, it allows you to play around and manipulate the uh, existing page that you're on, check for errors, look at the document structure. Um, but the console is actually an interactive JavaScript console. So you can actually type in JavaScript commands into here and they'll, you'll just see the results straight away. So for example, the classic console log is the uh, function that enables you to output some text. So let's do the classic hello world. Okay, so just literally typing in a statement there um, is all you need to do, and you've got an interactive JavaScript console there. So that's probably the simplest way you can actually start writing a bit of JavaScript now. If you actually close down the developer tools and reopen them again in the same uh, same page, You'll see the results still there, and if you push the up arrow on your keyboard, it'll actually cycle through the sort of previous commands that you've uh, uh, already done. So that's quite handy as well if you want to uh, just repeat something. You can write some fairly intricate um, JavaScript code in here. Let's just write a for loop in there. When you hit return, uh, and this depends on your browser, it should move you on to the next line and recognize that there's still more code to come rather than just trying to run that that bit of uh, b the first bit of a for loop, which would obviously give you an error normally. So let's just log out i to the console. And when it realizes, when Javas the JavaScript console realizes you've got to the end of the for loop, it will actually execute it for you as well. So you can do something you can do all your usual JavaScript stuff in there. However, you're probably not going to want to use that uh, for something a bit more complex. And especially if you want to actually save the code that you're working with and start applying that to a page. So the next method we'll look at is something a bit more permanent that allows you to uh, create code that you can reuse over and over again. So what we're going to do is have a look at um, creating a simple web page here. So what I'm going to do is just make a HTML page, really standard um, boilerplate stuff, just for creating a, a HTML uh, template. And I'm gonna save that. And I'm gonna put a script tag in here. Okay. And again, let's just do the console log for hello world. Oops, don't need that dollar there. So anything inside this script tag will be interpreted as JavaScript. So when I actually load up this um, index page, uh, uh, it will log that, it will run that JavaScript and actually uh, show us that, that output in the console. So let's open up the index page that we just created. And let's again go to the developer tools. And you can see again, we've got hello world. So that's working fine as well. So that's another way that you can actually run JavaScript locally on your computer without having to actually, um, you know, go into one of these tutorial sites that, that does the JavaScript for you. So just to show you a way of actually putting something onto the page as well, you can actually use the document.write method. 
So instead of logging things to the console, which is a bit more than what JavaScript can do, we can actually then write uh, text directly to the uh, the page that we're on as well. So if you want to put your output, if you're using this method, if you want to put your output uh, onto an actual web page and see that, um, then you can use document.write to do that. Okay. So the third method that you can use is actually by using JavaScript on the server side. And you might have heard of this uh, called Node.js. So this is sim simply a version of JavaScript that would normally run in your browser, but it's actually running outside of the browser. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So if you haven't got this installed already, you can actually just go to the website, as I'm showing you here, and actually download the latest version of Node.js here. And once you've got that installed for your particular um, your particular uh, operating system, what you'll need to do is actually go to a command prompt. So I'm on Windows here, and I'm just opened up a, a standard command prompt here. And then if I type the command Node in there, you'll see I get a another interactive prompt uh, to write JavaScript. So let's do our now familiar hello world. And very similar to what we did in the first instance on um, in our uh, browser in the dev developer tools, you can actually just do this straight from a command line as well. So you don't even need to open up a browser to do that. So you can actually write a JavaScript file and run that. So let's have a go at doing that. I'll just call it index.js. I'll save that to my desktop. And let's do something a bit more interesting. So we had that example in the developer tools before where we logged out the numbers. And let's just say hello world and log out the number as well. So nothing too complicated, but it's a bit more of a substantial bit of code. Okay, so if I just exit, oops, exit out of that by pressing Control C a couple of times, and if I now use Node, but instead of just put, typing in Node and going straight into that interactive prompt, uh, I just need to make sure I'm in the uh, desktop here as well, because that's where the file was. Okay, so here is the index.js file. So if I just run Node and then index.js, you'll see it runs that bit of code that's just above here in the uh, in our uh, text editor and you can run that as many times as you like now simply because you've saved that as a file and you can use node.js to kind of repeatedly uh, run that file over and over again and of course you can make changes and and test uh, what your program's doing so that's a really good way if you just want to write something purely in javascript you don't want to worry about the browser or you know creating elements on the page or manipulating them then that's really great for just kind of understanding how to write a program and there's lots of things you can do that we won't go into everything you can do with it here but uh, it can be quite a powerful um, way of writing your programs okay so the final way uh, that I'm going to show you today on how to run code in your browser uh, is to use a plugin for the text editor that you're using. So this is going to be very much dependent on the text editor program that you're using. I'm using Visual Studio Code, I have been for a few months now, and there's a plugin in here um, called Code Runner. So um, if you install this, it will actually just handle that job of running the um, the JavaScript code for you and you don't need to worry about um, going onto a command line or anything like that. It'll, you can do it all through the actual um, Visual Studio editor. So uh, let's just go back here and if you in Visual Studio code if you press F1 and you can actually type in run code and you'll see there's a shortcut for it here as well with Control Alt and N and if you select that as an option you can see you get a terminal uh, or a command prompt right in the uh, code editor for you and you can see it's obviously done the executed the uh, program that we wrote in that index.js file so it really depends on the browser that you're using atom has got uh, several different plugins if you use that i'm sure sublime text if you're familiar with that as well has got something 
but Visual Studio Code has got Code Runner amongst other things, and and that seems to be work quite well um, for just running uh, simple JavaScript programs. All right, well, that's it for this video. So I hope you've learned something in terms of how to get your JavaScript programs that you want to write out of those sandboxed uh, Code Academy style uh, text editors. Um, nothing wrong with Code Academy in terms of learning JavaScript, but when you actually want to write your own programs, you'll need to get onto your computer and run JavaScript locally. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe or like this video and, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.